greetings i'm excited today to introduce you to another tutorial on qtl mapping and uh, this is on uh, language mapping previously we have tutorials where we have uh, discussed on how to do association mapping for you to find uh, uh, your qtl based on uh, association mapping today we are going to look on uh, qtl mapping as uh, the, the interval mapping and uh, we are going to use a, a, a package called QTL and uh, if you haven't installed it you use the this line to to install it just remove this uh, hash and run it to install and then run the library load the, the, the package into a library so you you organize your data like this uh, from here and all from here towards this these are just uh, uh, genotypes and uh, the first uh, uh, rows here these are markers the name of your markers followed by the the chromosome number where those the markers are and uh, this is the position down here is uh, the genotypes we have cc cb and bb generally we have Three genotypes and therefore we have two alleles that C and B here they said they say that this is for phenotypes uh, but immediately after this genotype is the sample ID followed by other traits of your interest it can be three it can be ten it can be one based on what you are looking at so these are called uh, phenotypes and these are after phenotypes are genotypes so this is the arrangement of your data and uh, after arranging your data like that we use read.cross function to to load it into r our data was in csv format you specify the format here the file is the you you put the path where your data is so we can get our data by first setting the working directory where we are working on you can you can get it here and uh, copy it you can also just write get working directory just type get wd and press enter okay it's not coming just oh okay it's function i forgot you can write get wd and ensure that it, this this two brackets and run you see it gives you the the, the path you put it here the genotypes that we had we had cc cb and pb genotypes you remember let me pull it again we have cc cb and pb throughout those are our genotypes and therefore we have allele c and p so we have to specify that information allele c and p um you can put uh, an a string to be um once it finds this dash it will give it an a the file of NA that's what this means then quickly run that after running it's going to give you the information of your data here we have 163 individuals 93 markers and six phenotypes a cross type is f2 uh, this uh, uh, linkage mapping uh, you you use different uh, population depending on the on the on the resolution that you want others use near isogenic uh, lines uh, recombinant recombinant in the lines by back crosses and you can uh, do your uh, your analysis using even f8 f9 depending on the resolution that you want ours is f2 and i don't expect much from f2 but it's for a learning purposes this data you can just view the our phenotypes which are traits we had uh, our traits they are here some id whatever i told you these are called phenotypes but these are traits and some id Genotypes, these are number of chromosomes that we have. We have 19 chromosomes. You can do a little bit of diagnostics, but you can dig further and know the other diagnostics that you can do. You can plot the data. Uh, but now you are going to look on the first uh, trait in column one. So we have a phenotype column, that's column, column one. You run that, here it is. But sometimes, if your space is so narrow like this, let me do, do something I show you. When you run you run dust ah 
sometimes it doesn't come if it doesn't come just pull it like this and it will come you zoom and uh, you see this is a genetic map that we have chromosomes allocations and so st morgans this is missing genotypes and this you are seeing your data if you know it's uh, the frequency of your data how is distributed is it normal normally distributed you can plot um, genetic map and uh, the the missing genotypes using this function here uh, if you want them separately you see we have genetic map and the missing uh, uh, genotypes you got it here you can dig further and know uh, the quality controller methods you can use it to see the quality of your data uh, but I, I want to show you how to to, to get the recombination fraction you use est.rf that's estimate a recombination frequency of our fraction recombination fraction of our data you run that and then plot it you plot it it's very important in quality assurance here it's you it's supposed to show you the uh, recombination fraction uh, you should see some dots in in this upper upper part than here down here our data has some parts down here that shows our data is not such good but there's nothing we can do about that we can just know that we our data is not such good so, so then we go to analysis mm, for you to analyze analyze this data you def, develop an object from sim dot you know this an ob this object then we call it sim data we want to use our data that we imported to to make this object and we have to to use this and draws you set to the number we are comfortable with this is the number of replications for your simulations uh, step you set your step this is the distance between the positions at which a, a genotype is speak, speaking for simulation of dot uh, dot end this is the distance past the last marker the terminal marker to which a simulation takes place this uh, error probability is just um, assumed genotyping error. The Haldin, the, this uh, map dot function, we are using Haldin. We have others, uh, but we chose Haldin. It's used to converting the genetic distances to uh, to the combination fraction. So it's uh, this function Haldin. It's going to use Haldin method method to convert the genetic distances into combination fractions. The width width can be fixed or uh, variable. But we are advised to use fixed. After that, run this. So is, um, uh, after running this sim data, then we scan. Okay, we want to do two scannings: the scan one and scan one dot palm. Okay, scan one. We are going to use scan one function in both instances. We use this data, sim, sim data, and the, we specify the column where our trait is. Is in column one. If you are you are interested in the one in column two, you put it to here. The model is normal and the method is AM. We have different methods which you can take and look at it. And then the scan one dot palm, my palm, the arrangement or whatever we have put here is the same is up to here. But the only difference is the number of permutations. Here we have put 100. You can put 1000 for reliable data. So then we run this scan one without permutation. Then we come and run this, the other one with permutation which has to show some permutation running down here up to 100 it's running up to 100 thank you uh, now we, we 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 plot our uh, our Q, Q, qtl uh, plot uh, we plot scan one this is the first one here and we give it a name you're going to give it any name you're going to call it whatever you want we plot it comes here oh everything's happy we have run this here now you can see in chromosome 7 and 15 there's something happens so we know that anything above generally above load score of 3 is significant you can see chromosome 7 and 15 something's happening so we need to draw a threshold line and this threshold line has to have a statistical significance p values so we need to set the p values first we set the thresholds and the alpha these are the p values 0 0.01 you can put even 0 0.001 0 0.05 and we become more lenient a bit by putting 0 0.1 as part of an alpha which you want to test but we want to use scan.pam i know you are worrying where are we going to use this this one we are going to use it here to get the 
uh, the threshold. You run that. Then we see. You can see um, at 0 0.01, we have a, a, a threshold at 4.08. This is very stringent. At 0 0.05 is 3.6, and at 0. Point, at 0 0.10 is 3.23. A bit forgiving. Then we draw. We want to we want to draw these lines on this plot. You tell R uh, put give me an a line. It's called up line. And C line has to be horizontal. H stand for horizontal. V stand for vertical. We want horizontal. And we are going to use these thresholds. Now here we are going to use threshold one, which was 0 0.10. And the line has to be dotted. The width and the color we give it blue. So I run that. We we get it. It's here. It has placed it at. Uh, 3.23 here this for 0 0.5 p and this this chromosome the the the, the markers here the heats they still pass through this because um uh, uh it's lenient so you can put the the others like that two two here stand for this and give them color three stand for this the most uh, unforgiving and you, you you run you run the two and they draw their lines you can see even at the most stringent p value we have hits here at chromosome 15 and 7 so the next step we want to know what markers are this in chromosome 7 and 15 we we come and uh, run the summary of the scan that we did which produced this the scan one and we, we we also include the permutations that we run the scan one dot pub the load score column is column one and the alpha uh, at alpha of 0 0.1 and also 0 0.05 and also 0 0.101 we compare and see what markers are captured by by those alphas you run this, you get this this marker and 7, 15, this marker, and this one at this position and uh, all that. You run also there, it's the same markers. And uh, at this significance, it's the same markers. So we have known the markers that are hits that are associated to our traits of interest. These are the two markers that are linked to genus equilibrium with the traits of the gene of interest. But now we need to draw the marker effect. You may need to draw a marker effect. The marker effect of this marker and this marker. First, we, we create an objective for that marker by finding the marker. We know the marker was in this our data, simulated data. And it the first one was in cross chromosome 7, position 49.01. The third, the information will fit here. The second one is in chromosome 15, which is here, chromosome 15, and a position. 3.96 so these are two markers the two markers here because we know they where they are their position in chromosome and the chromosome number then we you run that marker one and then you we want to plot the effect using the function effect plot on simulating data a phenotype column our phenotype column is one and the marker name is marker name marker one here we draw the effect plus of this marker one. You run that. And uh, what you see is here, this is the effect plot of this mark for this marker. You can see the, the BB has higher value than the heterozygote. The same applies to marker two, this marker here, which was in chromosome 15 and that's six. You run that one and you plot the effect plot. The same data, the phenotype column is the same, the phenotype column one, and the marker name is marker two. You run, and it gives you the, the effect plot. You can see that when you have this CC, it, 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 it's high effect than BB. So once you add B, it lowers the effects. That is it. Oh, you may want now to plot the map, language map, 
you use this package language map view you can install and then load it into the library then um, leave around the summary you can create an empty list called f list or whatever name you want the empty list object it's empty f list is empty list of zero then we add uh, the first group of uh, lists we make two lists of locus of the markers that we want to have different color we want our marker which was this and this these were our markers which were significant we write them here and we specify a color we want color red all this information we put it in a, a, a group of a um, list group we, we we run that then we develop uh, uh, our list which was empty here we give it in group one we fit the list of this locus which is our marker two markers and the color which was uh, color is equal to color the color it was red then you run that after that we use this lmv.linkage.plot to plot it this information we get it from sim data one the out file is the file where you want to store your your, your plot in the form of pdf you make out file you use file path you you put the path where you want to save it we want to save it in our working directory and you give it a name but it dot pdf because this allows you to store in form of pdf so if you don't know the the the, the this um, the path you just type uh, uh, get working directory because get uh, wd and uh, you make sure that it has those brackets and if you press enter it gives you where your working directory is you paste it here and then we want to this sim data is the object that we are going to to use to draw the out files where we want to store our uh, uh, our plots map this we want to map our these two these two markers were found in chromosome 7 and 15 you can put all the chromosome if you want but I'm interested with these two chromosomes, but you can add if you want it three. The color of the linkage group title is blue or whatever color which you like. This is the color which gives you that this is chromosome one, this is chromosome two, chromosome one, chromosome two in color blue. Then you uh, mark a format list is this list which we made here as the information. So okay so we we run that and then that voila everything's done we want to open it's here let's open it it's here our, our map is here it's here you can see this the 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 marker which were uh, significant and this chromosome 7 and this chromosome 15 everything is happy i know you are happy i am happy now subscribe and share and uh, you can comment thank you very much i hope it was helpful that's all